<laughs> we haven't done it in so long. I've missed you guys. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. I missed you too. You and Diane. Yeah. Yep. And well, your cats oh. too. Okay, we should be live. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul complaining about my healthcare issues <laughs> to everyone. And we're live tonight. Uh, tonight, we're studying paper 47 from the Urantia book, The Seven Mansion Worlds. And that starts on page 530 of the original book, or if you're just looking it up by the paper, paper 4701, paragraph one. So let's uh, have a little prayer and we'll get started for tonight. Uh, Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. Pray that you'll open our hearts and minds that we might remember a little bit of this and share it with others. Help us to grow so that we're ready to go on to the seven mansion worlds. We thank you for our many blessings. We, we know that our earth's kind of in a mess, and we pray that you'll bless it, bless all the different groups. We thank you. We give you the praise. And your son, Michael, Jesus, and Nazareth. Amen. And hello, Rodney. Hey, guys. Hi. Like, hey, okay. Brother Rodney. <laughs> hey, Brother Tim. Hey. <laughs> Troy okay. Smith is with us. Troy Smith is? I don't, yeah. I don't see him on the uh, thing. The video. Oh, I don't. I won't. See, I won't know he's there unless his camera is on. You see him as a person on the, out there. No, Mr. Rodney. Jo huh? He just joined us. Yes. Where it says participants, it says seven, and then he's oh, at the very bottom. Oh, okay. Hi, Troy. I think I stopped to Troy not long ago. Um, oh, I see it down there. Now, why does it not show up on mine? I don't know. Who else we got over there? Troy's on his iPad. That's you. <laughs> That's me. Okay. Well, hi, Troy. Thanks for joining us. If you have a microphone, you can. You. That's you. That's me. Yeah. Okay. If you have a microphone, you can join us. I mean, you can chime in and say anything you'd like. Um, anytime, just go right ahead. You don't have to raise your hand or anything. We were pretty informal. There's just a he few of us. us. He, oh, did he? he? Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. We won't bite you. <laughs> we won't bite <laughs> Only on Sundays. Okay, here we go. The seven mansion worlds, the wonderful things we're going to. Okay, let's start with paragraph one. Diane, would you like to start us out? Let me... Okay. Paper 47. The Seven Mansion Worlds. The Creator's Son went on Urantia, spoke of the many mansions in the Father's universe. In a certain sense, all 56 of the encircling worlds of Jerusalem are devoted to the transitional culture of ascending mortals. But the seven satellites of world number one are more specifically known as the mansion worlds. Okay, so there's 56 worlds that have to do with ascending mortals when you get to the mansion worlds. Okay, now seven of these satellites that surround Jerusalem are very large spheres, very big planets. Okay, and each one of those planets has seven more spheres surrounding them as satellites. So what they're talking about, uh, the 56, is the seven huge spheres that surround Jerusalem, but the mansion worlds themselves are the seven spheres that surround the very first sphere, which is known as the Father's world, okay? And that's what they're talking about here. That's why it, when Jesus said, my Father's house, there are many mansions, he was talking about all the mansion worlds, but specifically the seven mansion worlds that we have to progressively go through to get to Jerusalem. Okay. So that's what they're talking about. And that, and they're say, telling us here that all of these worlds are dedicated to the transition culture of ascending mortals, which means that all not able to turn my video or mic on for some sure. unknown reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's fine. Troy, if you want to leave us a message or something, uh, uh, Roddy kind of watches that and he'll let us know. All right. Um, 
So these transition culture worlds are each one for training us, but the seven that surrounds the father's world are specifically their purpose is for training us to get us out of barbarianism. Okay. With each world, we as ascend higher and higher as Marancha beings and we develop our mortal, our Marancha mor moda. And by the time we get to about the fifth mansion worlds, most people are ready to fuse with their thought adjusters, that father fragment. So by about the fifth world, you can fuse with your, your father fragment normally. Now, some people on some planets fuse with their adjusters before they leave, leave their neighbor, neighboring planet. And that's possible for us too. But normally for that to happen, you have to live on a, a, a much higher spiritual type world higher on the scale higher on the skin we are we're stop warring with each other long enough to get spiritual so that's our problem right now um anyway so there are beings that go directly to the mansion world that even on the first world that have already fused with their adjusters so also they mention in the adjuster papers some individuals actually fuse with their adjusters right before they wake up on the mansion worlds too so you may get to the mansion world and has have fused with your adjuster and they'll let you know this if this happens right so be good little students out there right <laughs> we can always grow you know it's called ascension there is something i want to mention um i listened to a a, a video last night my, my wife and i was it night last night or night before with dr greer and y'all have heard me talk about dr greer before um stephen greer and he was talking about something that we had discussed a few weeks few months ago that i want to bring out and that is the fact that he was talking about the different dimensions and i want to mention this during this paper because if you think about it when we wake up on the first mansion world, what happens? We step into the next dimension, right? There's three, basically three different physical dimensions. There's many more than that, but the, there's three basic ones. What are they? Mortal or material, right? What's the second dimension? The second Marancha. dimension is the Marancha, right? Mm -hmm. And what would be the third dimension? The third dimension would be the spiritual. Spiritual. That's right, right. Now there's sub dimensions in each one of these, but those are the three major divisions, okay? And the reason I brought this up is Dr. Greer was talking about how a lot of the UFO sightings that we see that pop in and out of our dimension or our existence are of these other dimensions. And he mentioned in this little talk he gave that some of these dimensions are spiritual dimensions. Okay, the, the, there's a spiritual connection with everything, right? So when we see these lights in the sky and they pop in and then they disappear, they're popping in and out of our dimension, but they may live in a totally different type of dimension than we do, okay? And the reason I'm mentioning this, when you wake up on the mansion world, what happens? You're in a different dimension. You're in a different dimension. However, on the mansion worlds, what is also there on the mansion worlds? The physical dimension, right? Mm. So we not only have the physical dimension of material things, but we have the physical dimension of the Barancha things, which will be inside our new dimension. Make sense? So we have the benefit on that first mansion world, we can experience both the finite reality of the universe and the Marancha reality of the universe. And not only that, especially on this very first mansion world, they're going to mention this on the father's world. That's the main headquarters for the finaliters. Okay. Y'all remember who the finaliters were, right? These are people that's gone the whole Ascension plan, been embraced by God, the father, God, the son, and God, the spirit. And then they become finaliters and they, they come back to different planets to serve. 
And so on this finaliter world, what's so special is this. Occasionally, the material transformers allows us to see the finaliter dimension. Okay? And when that happens, we can actually see the finaliters themselves. Okay, on this first mansion world. And this happens annually or semi-annually, whatever, whatever period of time they do in between it. But this is something else we have to look forward to. On that first mansion world or on the father's world, we get the opportunity to see the dimension that we're our goal is to, to get to. Make sense? So don't you think that would increase your faith in the process that's going on? Well, it looks like it would have done something for Lucifer. You would think so, wouldn't you? Of course, yeah. Lucifer had this jealousy problem, right? Because all these mortals were going ahead of him on this progressive plan, and he was not allowed to. Remember that? You know, so actually he complained about how much time was spent with the mortals on their progression plan because he felt like way too much time was spent on the mortals allowing them to proceed to the paradise, right? Too much training. All right. So let's move on to the next one here. Roger. Yeah. Troy texted that he's unable to connect his video uh, or audio. Um, so he'll just hang out with us. That's fine. He's back with us. Okay, well, tell him if he has a question, just type it in there and you can relay it to us and I'll try to answer it for him, okay? All right, well, I'm sure he heard that. But okay. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome, Troy. Maybe by the next time, um, maybe by next time, if, if you give me a yell or an email or something, maybe I can, you can just, we can Zoom together and I can try to walk you through the, the settings on Zoom. It might help get it connected for you if you'd like to do that. Okay, so this is a picture of, we've seen this before, this is Jerusalem, and this is the, uh, let me use this mouse, because I'm looking at one in front of Diane, this is, this is the one y'all see here, see this big world, the finale of the world, this is what we were just talking about, and the seven mansion worlds are these satellites around these bigger worlds, now there's seven of these, right, that surround Jerusalem, so for each one of these worlds, there's seven more satellites around each one of those. And that's where they get the 56. Okay. All right. Let's go on down to the next one. All right. Let's see who's up next. Jane, would you like to read the next one, please? Okay. The transition world, number one itself, is quite exclusively devoted to ascended activities being the headquarters of the finaliter core assigned to Satania. This world now serves as the headquarters for more than 100,000 companies of finaliters. And there are 1,000 glorified beings in each of these groups. So there's a lot of finaliters on this. Think about that. 100,000 <laughs> companies of 1,000 each of finaliters. What in the world are they all doing? <laughs> hey, Roger. Yeah. When when they say the word glorified beings, you're talking about the finaliters? Uh-huh, the finaliters, okay. right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so take 100,000, multiply that by 1,000, and that's how many finaliters. Oh, I see Troy's up with us. He got his video working. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of definition, Roger, the term glorified, meaning that you have went from a mortal to... Um, paradise. You know what you were talking about—the ascension career. Yeah, that's the, the entire beings. the entire mm -hmm. ascension plan. And before they become finaliters, they have to have finished everything, stood before God the Father, be embraced by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Right? Recognized all three. So by the time you get to that point, you've been around in this universe for quite a while. Okay. And the importance of this is all this experience that the finaliters gain and the experience that we will gain uh, is used when we go out, just like the finaliters come back out to the planets. This experience will help us and them to help other individuals. Okay, so 
it's a big training school all the way through, t taking millions of years. You know, it's interesting. Roger, uh, I don't know if you answered Tim's question, but I'm curious too. Not only are they the finaliters, but also 1,000 glorified beings in each of these groups. Yes. What are the glorified beings? They are glorified because they've gone the whole ascension plan. And, and of course, when God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit embraces them, it increases their, how, how do I say this, spirituality and their glory in the universe. Illumination. Right? Yeah, it's an illumination. So uh, when we're able to see these beings on the Father's world, I'm sure that they, you know, just like Adam and Eve when they were on the planet, you know, how they had a, uh, a, a, a luminescence to them. You know, even in the old pictures, when they had talked about spiritual beings or important people, they always showed this aluminum uh, illumination glow yeah. around them. Remember that? You know, all mm -hmm. the artists did this. OK, and that's what they're talking about. This illumination sticks with these individuals when they come back to the father's world. So you ha they become what's called glorified beings. So I'm sure when we see them, we'll see the illumination of each one of them, because what happens on on your spiritual progression is you become more and more a children of light. Do you not? Mm -hmm. OK, you remember, God, the father is light. So this this light rubs up on us, right? All right, so well, that's what they're talking so about. So another thing here, though, but I thought all finaliters have gone to the Father and back. They have. They have. They have. Mm -hmm. All of them. So that means that all of these beings in these groups are all glorified beings. You follow me? Okay. You know, it's not just some of the group, but all of them are glorified beings. Every single one of them. Oh, I think what it's saying is 100,000 companies of 1,000 each. That of but 1, Finelator Core, Rodney, yeah, Finelator Core yeah. is 1,000 individuals. That's so, so you basic, would, you would, right. Yeah, you'd take 100, you'd take 100,000 multiply by 1,000, and that's how many individuals you'd have. So it's just going to keep adding, though. Oh, yeah. Man, it'll be saturated. Well, we'll find out later on in this little couple paragraphs down that as the mansion worlds are finished, in other words, when all the beings, all the humans have gone through, all, from all the planets have all gone through the mansion worlds of our local system, then the mansion <laughs> worlds start to be populated by the finaliters. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the mansion worlds changes with each and every local universe. So, you know, right. we're talking billions and billions and billions of individuals that will pass through the mansion worlds just in our local universe. But keep in mind, there's there's one of these for every single system. That's okay. Right. Every system. So that's a lot of mansion worlds. So these will all be populated by... Whom? The finaliters. Finaliters. Yeah. Yes. And, then they'll, and their it, its purpose will also change, right? Okay. And this is and you, what I was just yeah. talking about. You could read paper 31, Rodney. That will give you a, an idea of who um, is in that group, too, like a Midway or Seraphim. They yeah. go through that list. Uh, small paper. 31. 31. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Rodney, would you like to take the next one, please? Yes. Uh, when a system is settled in enlightened life, and as the mansion rules, one by one cease to serve as mortal training stations, they are taken over by the increasing finaliter population, which accumulates in these older and more highly perfected systems. So as this happens, the system becomes more and more perfect, perfected, right? Okay, and more and more of the planets have reached light and life. 
And this is the process of getting the whole system up to the light and life status over time. Right. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the important thing for us is we know that even though we see so much evil going on in this planet, we know eventually we will become more spiritual and we will eventually le reach light and life. And this may take several magisterial sons, several teacher sons, and that sort of things that'll come down to this planet and enlighten us over time. But it will happen. We won't sit in our lifetime because we're only here about 80 to 100 years, but it will happen eventually. Okay. Uh, Troy, we give everybody the opportunity to, to, to read or not to read. So did you get your speaker going? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Would, would you like to take, let me uh, change the slide. And if you'd like to, you can take this next paragraph. Sure, I got my glasses on. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. I have to have them too. <laughs> Just blur with that. All right. The, the seven mansion worlds are in charge of the Romantia supervisors and the Melchizedek's. There is an acting governor on each world who is directly responsible to the Jerusalem rulers. The Uversa mm -hmm. conciliators maintain headquarters on each of the mansion worlds, while adjoining is the local rendezvous of the technical advisors. The revision directors and the celestial artisans maintain a group headquarters on each of these worlds. The Spera, Spera, Speranja. Speranja. Functions mm -hmm. from Mansion World number two onward, while all seven, in common with the other transitional culture planets in the headquarters world, are abundantly provided with the Speranja of standard creation. Okay. Now remember that the Speranja are not the same as the Spernasia. Okay. The Spernasia are what the gardeners they do all the all the work and that sort of thing that keeps the place beautiful and that sort of thing where the sparanja they start on mansion world number two only they're the more <clears throat> spiritual types of beings that help us to advance spiritually where the sparanja serves us more like in all the common things that need to be done the sparanja also help uh, take care of the nursery, the children, you know, any of the things that the children need during their growing up their seven, 16, 17 years. Okay. Now, who are all these other people that are talking about here? All right. We know that the Marancha supervisors are in charge of all the physical matter, of the Marancha worlds. Okay. The Melchizedek's, we know they are all the teachers, the head types of teachers. Okay. And the Uversa conciliators. Remember when we talked about this years ago, it's been quite a long time since I've, I've talked about the con uh, conciliators and the technical advisors. This is part of the trio that is the legal system of all the super universe. There's always three of them, right? You'll have technical advisors, uh, technical advisors, conciliators, and there'll be a being that act actually the, the three of them makes judgments on cases that come up when any type of being or individual has a conflict with another okay so there really are court system in the super universe and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of these so they each have headquarters uh on the mansion worlds okay and we remember that the reversion directors and celestial art artisans, the reversion directors are the ones that entertain us when we get to the mansion worlds. So <laughs> they they set up things to for, so we'll be entertained, you know, plays and, and singings and, you know, everything that we enjoy. The reversion directors will be enjoying. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, uh, right? YouTube, whatever you want to call it. You'd be the actor, Rodney. That, yeah, there you go. Everything that's that's entertainment. Now, the celestial artisans, remember, they work along with the Spor Spornasia to beautify every single planet. Okay? <clears throat> so the, the celestial artisans, we can all volunteer for a thousand years term with, as a celestial artisan if we have any talent. 
you know, you have to have talent to be able to do this. So if you like painting or singing or music or whatever, th it would be the Celestial Artisans that you would con contact. And they, if you have enough talent, they'll let you come along with them and entertain everyone for a thousand years. Okay. So, hey, Roger. Yes. The technical advisors are the traveling courts and the reversion directors are the uh, entertainers and the celestial artisans are the beautified of the planet pretty much. Right. Right. That's just beautiful. Wow. Y yeah. Everything is taken care of, right? There's no part of <coughs> human existence that they have not provided us with some sort of <clears throat> being that helps us enjoy uh, <clears throat> our life. Right. Once we've graduated into the Marancha state. Okay. Of the course. Finalers. Yeah, go ahead, Tori. That, that uh, term, Marancha, I, I don't believe I remember hearing. What is the definition of that word? That would be the next state of being as a human we go to. When we die, we're considered, when, we, when we're on this planet, we're considered finite or human. OK, and there's millions and millions of variations of humans on all the planets throughout the universe, Troy. OK, and but they're all considered human. Now, when you die, as soon as you die and you're when you're resurrected on the Marancha world, you're giving a new physical body and that's called a Marancha state. OK, so Marancha is really the net, the definition of the next uh, type of being we will be or the next type of reality we will wake up into. And that's why I was talking about the different types of uh, reality. You know, have, you have the physical reality and then you have the Marancha reality. And above that is the spiritual reality. Now, interesting part about that, Troy, is there are spiritual beings in the Marancha reality. There are spiritual beings <clears throat> in the physical or mortal reality, but they're outside our view site because we're on a very low level. So as soon as we get to the Marancha level, we get expanded vision to a certain point. And then as we grow as a Marancha type being, our vision is expanded even more. And eventually we can see the spiritual beings too. And when, when I was talking about how they visualize the finaliters for us, that's a perfect example because the finaliters are in a much higher dimension than we are. Okay, so we can't just see them. Our eyes won't pick up the light of them we're very limited in our eyesight so as a marancha being we're still limited in our eyesight but that eyesight expands <coughs> as we become more and more <coughs> spiritual example that would be this the angels on this planet that's assigned to you <coughs> can make themselves visible to you if they choose to but in able for in order for them to do that since you're not of a Marancha state yet, the physical controllers, the master physical controllers must expand your vision for a period of time so you can visualize even the angels. So let's say you have an angel that wants to, to share something with you or, or tell you something. If they want to make themselves visible to you, it takes these energy transformers to transform your eyes to the point where you can actually see the light or the 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 span of light that the angels live in okay so you can think of it this way it's really there's seven dimensions all together and that's our pathway to get to god the father by the time we get to the seventh dimension we will be high enough where we could actually see or visualize god the father but until we get to that sixth or seventh dimension there's no possible way our eyes could be adjusted so we could see God the Father. You follow me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Roger. Yeah. Could you also label Marancha as the joining of the material and the physical? You could. Yeah, that would be a pretty good explanation of it because you're taking what you started out with and adding to it. Actually, you're, you're, it's not so much adding to it because when you leave the physical dimension, you leave the physical body behind completely 
That's why they give you a new body. Okay. So when you die, that, that vessel that you've been walking around in, in is useless to you from there on. So it doesn't matter if you're buried, if you're cremated, if you're blown up by a nuclear, it doesn't matter because you are no, no longer in that physical body. In a, in, in a split second of time, you're transformed from the physical to the marancha, but you don't have consciousness until they plug you into that new body. You follow me? Are you encircated? So you're encircated, yes, because mm. your guardian angel has your soul, right? Remember how the three parts of the the, the mind mean, matrix, yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, the mind matrix, the personality, and the what soul. What is that? Well, the, the mind matrix the, transcripts the mind your personality? matrix. No, it's totally different. The mind okay. matrix is the possession of the thought adjuster, your father mm. fragment, right? That father fragment owns that mind matrix. It also is the guardian of your personality till you wake up on the mansion world. But your mind records go with your guardian angel along with your soul. Now your mind records is also duplicated in whom? The universal the father? No, the, the archangel, archangel oh. right? That's why when you wake up on the mansion world, who's going to be there with you? When you wake up, you will have both seraphim with you there. You will have life archangel. carriers. Life mm -hmm. carriers will be there. The life carriers will kickstart your new body. Okay. The guardian. The archangels angel, of the resurrection. Yeah. The archangels of the resurrection are there to verify that your record of whom you are, when you wake up, you are still you. Your soul's reunited with your personality and your soul is reunited with your mind transcript. So you have a memory of what's happened before. If you woke up without that mind memory, what would happen? You would think you were a brand new being. You, you wouldn't me? have any recollection of you who wouldn't have you any just recollection were. of who you were or anything else. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Roger. So it, it all has to come back together and it comes back together in that instant in time when you wake up in the mansion worlds. And if you've been spiritual in your life, you're going to wake up on the third day, right? Just like Jesus did. Okay. Now you were resurrected. Jesus resurrected himself. He didn't need all this, right? He's the creator's son. <laughs> he resurrected himself. He's the only being that's ever been on this planet that resurrected himself. No or in this has. universe. Or in this universe, right? When you're God, you don't need anybody else to <laughs> resurrect you, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just that simple. Okay, let's move on. Let's see here. Uh, Tim, I think you're up. One, the finaliters world. Although only finaliters and certain groups of savage children and their caretakers are resident on transitional world number one, provision is made for the entertainment of all classes of spirit beings. Transition mortals and student visitors, the Spornagia, who function on all of these worlds, are hospitable hosts to all beings whom they can re recognize. They have a vague feeling concerning the finaliters, but cannot visualize them. They must re regard them much as you do the angels in your present physical state. So the Spornasia is only uh, high enough, uh, actually, until you get to the to to the uh, past you versa, really. And uh, so they can only visualize beings of a spiritual value up to a certain point. OK, just like we can't right now, but they can sense that they're there. So they actually cannot see the finaliters either. while they're there. And interesting question is this when the physical controllers allow us to see the finaliters, it makes you wonder if they allow the Spernasia to see them too. Yeah. Good question. Not sure. Right. But the Spernasia 
will act as entertainers or guides to all these different types of beings, the spirit beings, transitional mortals, and the student visitors. And we know that all these same type of beings do what? They come to our planet and visit too. Okay. So we just don't know they're here. We don't see them. Okay. Let's keep moving here. Um, we're back to Diane, I believe. Did I miss anybody? I wonder where Gary is. He must have got tied up at work. Oh, let me mute here. So the finaliter world is a sphere of exquisite physical beauty and extraordinary marancha embellishment. The great spirit abode located at the center of activities, the temple of the finaliters, is not visible to the unaided material or early marancha vision. But the energy transformers are able to visualize many of these realities to ascending mortals. And from time to time, they do thus function as on the occasions of the class assemblies of the mansion world, students on this cultural sphere. So the energy transformers makes it possible for us and maybe even the Sparanja, I'm not sure, to visualize these uh, finaliters, right? And probably other beings. But they also, the important part of this too, is they also allows us to see the materials of the finaliters. Because yeah. without being able to see the materials of the finaliters, we couldn't see the temple. Right? That's how we <laughs> notice how we've talked about it here on this planet is probably Marancha buildings and temples and things like that that are here on this planet. We just don't know they're there. We can't see them. Roger. Yeah, yeah Jane. <laughs> This, this kind of reminds me what made it possible um, during the transfiguration. Yes. Yeah. That was at mm -hmm. a one time temporary enabling. Exactly. That's right. It's the same exact principle, Jane. Same exact one. Right. So because without that visualization, no one would have been able to see what was going on. Right. Right. Because, well, they would see the physical body of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? But when Mar when Jesus spoke in his Marancha form or his spiritual form, or the, no one would even know it, right? So, or seeing the other two by his side. Or seeing the other two, yeah, yeah. seeing Gabriel, and, yeah, yeah, and Father Melchizedek. They couldn't see either one of them if their eyes weren't, if they didn't allow their eyes to see. Mm -hmm. Right now, now keep this in mind when the transfiguration happens. We're talking about the two that saw him were better Bedouins, right? Just like human beings, just like we were. Can you imagine the psychic imprint this must have had on two? human beings that had never seen anything like this in their life suddenly being able to see these celestial beings hmm. they didn't want but to leave it was peter yeah. james and john yes. peter james and john right right and what did they immediately do they felt they fell to their face did they not mm -hmm. because they were psychically overwhelmed by the spiritual imprint that this made on them right so uh, immediately they would think they were standing before God the Father and they fell to the floor, right, on their knees. That's the same thing that one of us would do, probably. I mean, think about it. If your guardian angel suddenly appeared to you at the foot of your bed some night, what would you do? Scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why they do, don't do it on a regular basis, okay? Hey, Roger, when you say psychically, are you talking about psyche, like the soul? The soul, yeah, the psychic mm -hmm. imprint of something like this happened. Whenever, whenever a human being experiences something outside their physical human range, <laughs> right, that makes a psychic imprint on you. Now, a good example. Let me give you a good example of that. 
Dr. Greer has these viewings, uh, I call them viewings, you, you know, where they go out, 30 or 40 individuals will go out and try to talk to the uh, the extraterrestrial beings, you know, the UFOs, right? Have you ever seen anything like that? When anyone in these groups sees a being, uh, a, a whether it's a terrestrial being or a celestial being, what happens to them? They get a psychic imprint of something outside the human norm. You follow me? So do you think they ever forget that? Not likely, right? Because you're talking about something outside the human norm that would help happen to you now. What's another example of that? When people think they see ghosts and that sort of thing, would you think that would be this along the same line? Mm -hmm. You know, because it's outside the human norm and it's not something physical that you could put your finger on. Okay. So everything in this universe affects us in one way or another. Okay. Now this is a picture of, how am I doing on time there? I'm still all right. This is a picture of the the father's world and dur during a viewing of the finaliters. Okay, this is what would happen. So the energy transformers would make these things visible and you'll notice right in the middle is what? The temple. Okay, so this is just an example of the viewing of the temple. All right. Let's go on. Let's see. Uh, Diane, I think, uh, did you just read this? Yeah. Okay, Jane, would you take this one? All through the mentioned worlds experience, experience, you are in a way spiritually aware of the presence of your glorified brethren of paradise attainment. But it is very refreshing now and then actually to perceive them as they function in their headquarters abodes. You will not spontaneously visualize finaliters until you acquire true spirit vision. Okay, so you won't actually see a lot of these spiritual beings until you yourself have acquired spirit vision, and you will do that as you progress upward. Okay. So, so in the beginning, Roger, we need the energy transformers. That's sort right. of like what happened on the transfiguration with the right. apostles. And then yeah. eventually we obtain a higher state and spirit status, and then we're able to not rely on the energy transformers. Right. So they pretty much put glasses on us. <laughs> well, they put glasses on us, you know, viewing yeah. glasses, 3D glasses, if you will, yeah. right? So we can see them. Great. Um, and and keep in mind, there's a reason that they do this. It it gives us the the ability to want to go on to the next stage to grow, right? Spiritually, it gives us some some inspiration to obtain in a in a later part or a later part of our existence. Okay. All right. I was kind of hoping that uh, Gary was here when we went through this one. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this next one but didn't make it tonight did he okay so let's go on to the next one uh <laughs> rodney i think you're up okay on the first mansion world all survivors must pass the requirements of the parental commission from their native planets the present urantia Commission consists of 12 parental couples recently arrived who have had mortal experience in rearing three or more children to the pu pubescent age. Service on this commission is rotational and is for only 10 years as a rule. <clears throat> All who fail to satisfy these commissioners, as to their parental experience, must further qualify by service in the homes of the material sons on Jerusalem 
are in part in the probationary nursery on the finaliters world. Okay, so we know that those children that uh, do not make it to to full age where they have a decision possible, that these children, all these children that die young, you know, from from conception to to you know six or seven years old, all these children automatically go on to the mansion worlds, and this is the world they go to right? The father's world. And as a rule, the first choice is given to the parents to raise these children that they didn't get the opportunity to raise as humans, right? So their parents is given the first opportunity. But for those of us who never had three children or only had one child or, or whatever, must have the experience of raising at least three children before we leave the first mansion world. So these children are assigned to us uh, on a voluntary basis as children, which we help raise to the age of 16 to 17. And at that point, they are given the opportunity to choose survival, to choose the heavenly path but if they do not choose the heavenly path the second death they do not revive them okay so they have to make a decision by about the age 16 to 17 that they want to go on the ascension plan and they want to follow the father's way and each one of these children are given adjusters just like we are when we're children so our job is to help train them and get them to the point where they can logically make this decision to go on the ascension plan. And we have to do this, each one of us, for at least three children to gain what? To gain parental responsibility and know what it's like to be a parent. Okay. Hey, Roger. Yes. Isn't it true that these children that are five and six who die from natural accidents, et cetera, they wake up on the finaliters world and not the mansion they, worlds? They wake up on the finaliters world. That's true. They are resurrected on the finaliter world, just like we are re resurrected on the mansion worlds, but they are resurrected at the same time as the first parent gets to the first mansion world. Okay. Do they have so, a Marantia body? Yes, they're given Marantia bodies. They're sexless. They don't have any sex differentiation. Well, they're probably differentiated, but they don't have any sexual organs or anything like that. Just like we won't have when we get to the mansion worlds. Okay. Thank you. So, so yeah, they are resurrected. And then that first parent that makes it to the mansion world gets to decide whether they want to uh, raise the child or not. And if they choose not to, they probably wait till the second parent gets there and gives them that opportunity too before the child is awakened. Make sense? Everything's got a system. All right, let's see. Um, Troy, you were so still, you wanna do this one? What irrespective of parental experience, Mentoring world parents who have growing children in the probation nursery are given every opportunity to collaborate with the Marantra custody custodians of such children regarding their instructions and training. These parents are permitted to journey there for visits as often as four times a year. And it is one of the most touchingly beautiful scenes of all the ascending career to observe the mansion world parents embrace their Colonel offsprings on the occasions of their periodic pilgrimage to the finalitous world. Or one or both parents may leave a mansion well ahead of the child. They are, they are quite often contemporary for a season. So one of these parents are are on the mansion world pretty much the same time as these these children are all the time. Right. So they that they have a lot of input and uh, what's going on to, to raise these children. Okay. Um, Tim, I think you're up next. Okay. Still with? No. Nope. Right. Yes. 
No sending mortal can escape the experience of rearing children. That's for you, Gary. Their own or others. <laughs> <laughs> Either on the, and me too. Either on the material world or subsequently on the finaliter world or on Jerusalem. Fathers must pass through the essential experience just as certainly as mothers. It is an unfortunate and mistaken notion of modern peoples on Urantia that child culture is largely the task of mothers. Children need fathers as well as mothers. And fathers need this, hold on, let me move. I, I can't oh, see yeah. this parental oh. experience as much as do mothers. Okay, mothers. yeah, because your picture's at the, the, the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Wake up, men. You're responsible for raising your children as much as your wife is, right? That's what they're telling us here. They need the experience of fathers as well as the experience of mothers. Now, why do you think this is? In order for you to understand God the Father, you have to do what? You have to have been a father yourself. In order to understand Jesus, the <clears throat> Son of God, which is our local universe God, right? And he's our father. In order to understand him, you have to have been a father. In order to understand the local universe mother spirit, you have to have been a father and a mother, right? Or a mother. In order to understand uh the son of God, the first son of God, the eternal son of God, who is our mother son, you have to understand what being a mother is. And under, in order to understand the infinite spirit and the Holy Spirit, you have to understand what it's like to be a mother. Is that as plain as I can put it? I like the Supreme too as a mother reference. Yes, yes, the Supreme is also a mother reference, right? God the Supreme. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Probationary nursery. What, what time is it? 6.53. I think I better quit there and we'll take up the probationary nursery next time. Okay, so we're going to stop on this one, the probationary nursery. And we will take this up next time on this section. And uh, I know it's cutting a little short tonight, but I'd rather do that than get in the middle of this and not uh, and people get lost on me here. So uh, we'll take up this next section next time, which will be next Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Remember, Thursday, we will be going back to the adjuster papers. And I believe we're on 110, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, we'll be taking that up on Thursday at our normal time again. So we're back into the groove, back into the groove of things. So let's have a little prayer for tonight and we'll quit for tonight. Uh, Rodney, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for, uh, for that we've got the opportunity to meet to study this wonderful revelation and it's good to know especially about the finale to worlds where we'll, we will soon be and uh, Father we thank you for that Roger has the ability to further explain uh, what we read in this revelation and uh, we hope that we gain enough knowledge from it that we can share it with family and friends and in all things Father, we want your will to be done. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 And thank you for the, everyone that came back and joined us again. And all those out there listening uh, on Zoom and YouTube and Vimeo and all those other places. Thank you for coming and seeing us. And um, let me stop the share here for a second. And we will hope to see everybody next time right <laughs> oh troy can come back yes diane, troy. how's your cats how's your cats diane <laughs> oh, i like those little guys rogers yeah. <laughs> i like them those yeah, little guys are so cute are doing fine yeah everybody's you know doing we're great we're down to one cat so it's kind of sad we had seven and when you lose six of them you're like oh man 
<laughs> yeah, that's a lot of cats to lose. <clears throat> well, Troy, you we're glad you joined us tonight. Please come. Yeah, join Troy, us thanks tonight. for coming, yeah. Troy. Yeah. yeah. How many yeah. people is normally in the group? Well, anywhere from two to eleven. We've had as many as fifteen at one time, but it, wow. people come and go. You know, they could they come come in sometimes, uh -huh. and we have a lot of people that that listen to our. Uh, thing on youtube every every week and we have a lot of people that listen uh that are on our mailing list we we send out the videos to that that listen to them and uh, we got let's see on youtube we got over 600 videos and on uh vimeo we got up right at 500 i think uh but and then we put them all on facebook too and they stay on facebook for a while and then they drop off so so the the library is really on YouTube, man, and it's been out there for quite some time, about 12, 13 years now, I guess. So a lot of people watch our things. We've had as many as 40,000 from other countries listen to our uh, individual things at a time. So a lot of people uh -huh. in Guyana. How did you Africa. find this, Troy? Oh, through a sequence of events. Um I was teaching a class maybe about a month back and the Urantia book came up as a source material for something. <laughs> I yeah. can't remember what it came up for. And uh, I was so intrigued by it that I wanted to be a part of a study group, you know? And so I, I began, I went out to, I think the Urantia website and looked for a study group and there was none on the Urantia page but I called the young lady down in Orlando and asked her because she helped me. And so she directed me to some links and da, 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 And then that's how I found you all. So I was really excited. And I'm on the east side, like close to Stone Mountain. So I have cousins out in the cooler areas. Yeah. I'm not on Stone Mountain. Yeah, I'm right in Lithonia next door to Stone Mountain off of Redan and Panola Road. You're not so, yeah, so I was, at all. I was excited to, because it's a, uh, obviously a vast material we have so little that's been released in this generation because i love to study and get down into some of the heavy stuff and it, it was some of the most current and out of the box stuff i had ever seen yeah <clears throat> yeah well i've been looking at it since 1973 so i've been only been teaching it about what's it about 13 years now there <clears throat> something like that so yeah. I had 50 years of reading it over and over. Is there any uh, follow-up to it? Did they print anything after that? Because I noticed it stops at the life no. of Jesus, but there's it nothing does. after that. No, nothing after that, Troy. It, it, it was released in 1955, the, mm -hmm. the book was. There's a lot of, you can look at our video on the uh, introduction of the Urantia books, got the history. Mm -hmm. but um yeah there's nothing released now you have to be real careful because there was these cutoff groups um in the 70s all these different individuals kept swearing that they were getting channelers we call them that are getting messages from other people off world mm -hmm. and and according to what we were taught earlier uh before the 70s um basically no communications have been given to us since then now just studying this paper tonight we we know that if if jesus does return you know when jesus says he's coming back that every eye shall see and every ear shall hear uh when he returns and we know from what we just read tonight about the finaliters they can they can let us every being on this planet visualize jesus if he comes back at the same time okay mm -hmm. so when he does come back, which he will sooner or later, uh, that will be the case. But I, the Urantius Fellowship and Foundation years ago uh, did not approve or sanction any of this channeling stuff that's been coming out for years that people, you know, it's like spiritualists. They swear they hear ghosts and all this other stuff, <laughs> you know, and uh, so none of that is authorized as far as I'm concerned. I, you know, they tell us in the book that this revelation is going to be good for about a thousand years. And at that point, it'll have to be updated. By that point, we'll all be gone to the mansion world. So it won't matter to us. We got a lot to study before 
before that time anyway. Just to learn the book is a major, major accomplishment. I, I, I know from studying the Bible so many years before I studied the book that the understanding that's in the book, it takes time. There's just no Ooh. way around it. it. You have to put your time in and it's 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 self-justifying you know you become more and more enlightened with each year you study it and it's one of those things that's experiential you just have to experience it for yourself nobody can do it for you it's it's something that takes your own dedication and time to understand and do and once you do there is no one that will ever convince you that the book is not true you know because it's just got a ring of truth all the way through it. And once you start putting, connecting all the dots, connecting the dots with the Urantia book, with the Old and New Testament and the stories of Jesus. And when you put it all together, your faith becomes so strong that there is no one in the universe that convince you that this is not true. You know, that's just all there is to me. So, hey, Roger, a, I had a question for you. Yeah. So there was a debate between an atheist and a Christian, and the atheist was replying, well, I'm a good moral person, and everybody can tell you that I'm I, pretty morality is really good, and I don't mm -hmm. need God. You know, I don't need God. You, what would you, you say no, to that? I'd say you have no morality without God. There is no such thing as morality without God. Morality comes from the influence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So... You cannot have morality, period, without God. I don't care what anybody tells you. It just does, they work together. You can't, it, it would be kind of like saying, I'm married, but I don't have a wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Once that oneness comes together, it is never really separated. And that's the same way with, with God. Once you accept God as your father and that thought adjuster, that father fragment within you, accepts the betrothal of yourself to it there is nothing that will separate you under any when you also say that those spirit presences like the adjuster the thought adjuster the mm -hmm. seven adjunct mind spirits the presence yeah. of our um um divine minister or mother spirit yeah the holy and then, spirit um, and then and then the spirit, spirit of, of truth. truth yeah okay yeah. they also yeah. play an important role on in morality all of it does you know, you can't, that's why I'm saying you can't have morality without God. You just can't Correct. do it. You know, I could give you a whole uh, argument for atheists, but I'm I'm not going to do that. It's just, that's out of our realm. You know, it really is. So I am curious to ask a question based upon what he just asked. And I think it's that you, when I contacted you the first time, that term thought adjuster. Yes. The question that I'm hearing is how do you, describe the composition of a human being maybe meaning spirit soul and body right based upon what you are and these other elements for lack of terms that seems to be attached to the mortal as well the thought of just the mystery mm -hmm. bonus, blah 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 I what can is, break it down to you real, real simply, Troy. Okay. The thought adjuster, the fat father fragment, is the actual fragment of God the Father. Okay. That comes to dwell in your mind at about five and a half to six years old. Okay. A separate entity. Totally. It doesn't come to that age because up until that age, your soul is the possession of your guardian seraphim and two cherubim. Okay. They are in charge of making sure you get to the mansion worlds. Okay. So up to that point, uh, there, if something happens to you, you automatically go to the mansion worlds and that's where you will be uh, awakened again. But God, the father, that father fragment comes to your mind and indwells your mind at about five and a half to six years old. And that is a super imposition on your mind or your psyche or brain, whatever you want to call it yourself. It's an internal influence. Okay. That is the only internal influence you come from that comes from God. Everything else is a external influence. The next external influence you have, which you're born with, 
is the seven adjutant mind spirits. And that's a whole different level. And I'll let you lesson in its uh, in itself. The seven adjutant mind spirits is a gift from the local universe mother spirit. And that's given to you at the moment of birth. You have those seven adjutants. That's an external influence, though, on top of your mind. The other external influences, uh, the other one coming from the local universe, Mother Spirit, is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is given to us from the infinite spirit, the third portion of the Trinity, is given to us from the infinite spirit through the local universe, <laughs> Mother Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is superimposed <clears throat> on your mind. It's an external influence. The spirit of truth, which is the influence of the eternal son and the local son, which is Jesus, okay, or Michael's we know him, that was poured out on all flesh on the day of Pentecost. And that's an external influence as well. Now, the only other external influence you have is your guardian angels, and you got two seraphim. Uh, 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 and two cherubim or a sanabim and a, and a cherubim and uh, those are all external influences that influence your decisions and your life and puts things in front of you so you can gain spiritual experience as a mortal okay now when you leave this planet you eventually become a mortal, I mean, a Marancha being, and eventually you will go through the entire local universe. And when you become a first stage spirit, you no longer need the seven adjutant mind spirits. So that goes from being the seven adjutant mind spirits and becomes the cosmic <coughs> mind or the influence of the infinite spirit. OK, so that's the that's the breakdown of the things that influence you in your life. Now, if you only remembered one thing from everything I just told you, the most important thing is the fact that God, the father, gives a fragment of himself to indwell you. And he helps to spiritualize your life, helps you make decisions so that your life is not just a mortal hush posh of doing different things. It becomes a life of spiritual significance. And it's this thought adjuster that adjusts your thoughts while you sleep so that these things that you experience in life becomes a permanent record for your permanent life, your Marancha life. So, hey, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Jane had a question first. Oh, go ahead, Jane. I can't hear you, Jane. You got mute on. You're muted. I apologize for that. Okay. I've got to leave, but I want to say this before I leave um, to Troy. I came to the Urantia book almost the same way as you did. I was looking up for something. And um, what I found very, very helpful, maybe Roger can give you the link to his website. And I started from the beginning listening to his lectures on my own time, you know, because there is so much if you're starting from this point, but all of it is available from the very first page. And it's it's yeah. marvelous, you know. So I've got to leave you. I wish you well. I think I think Happy I gave you Troy the website already. Oh yeah, well. I do and have he, it. Yeah. He's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. very busy then. <laughs> Troy, you, yeah. only, you only have about 50 years to catch up with me oh yeah, yeah that's right oh you'd yeah. be so busy you don't you won't <laughs> stop there is so much bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye all right uh I think tim. tim had something so hey something. roger when when yeah. somebody asks you when somebody asks you what is the soul you could basically say that it's an experiential acquirement based on decisions through growth. So it's based on your decisions. And that's it how is. you grow an immortal soul. But they also yeah, use with, the word a Marancha soul. So yeah, that's a yeah, totally different. Yeah, it's the experience of the Marancha soul growing and mm -hmm. developing what they call spiritual significance or moda, right? Correct. Marancha moda, which is the wisdom of that experience we've gained not only in this lifetime, but the lifetime to come. 
Right. You see, I always view the universal father as having an experiential soul that would be the supreme because he's the god of experience. Yeah. And it's sort mm -hmm. of like, you know, if the universal father were to have a soul, well, what would that be like? Well, it would be like having the supreme. <laughs> it would be the supreme. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Y'all have y'all have a good night. You too, you everybody. All. Thank you. We will see you. Nice Thursday. meeting you, Troy. Thank you so yeah. much for attending, Troy. It's very nice all having right. you here, sir. Ooh. Yep. Okay. All we righty. will see everybody then. All right. Bye bye. N bye bye, everybody. Let me Love stop you guys. recording. You too. Here, stop recording down here.